Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I didn't bring a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm going to share more of a personal experience as uh, maybe someone that uh, uh, benefited from similar programs. Um, I was uh, incarcerated when I was 16 years old, uh, sentenced to uh, a life sentence, uh, 18 years to life in prison in California. Um, I actually uh, you know, did a lot of time in San Quentin, not that far away from uh, where we are right now. Um, I came from uh, kind of like similar stuff I hear you guys talking about, like these marginalized communities, um, you know, and, I, and there are names that I can't pronounce in countries that I don't know about, but they sound like, you know, the places I, that I grew up and uh, the places that I work today that, you know, in San Francisco. Um, so I, I came, I grew up in Stockton, California. Uh, it's about an hour away from here, pretty tough town. Um, single mother, kind of typical story. And I got involved in gangs at an early age. Uh, drugs, drinking, kind of went out of control for a year or two and landed in prison. Um, I was sentenced, uh, by the time I was 17, almost 18, I was sentenced to life in prison. I started out at San Quentin and then moved uh, to uh, various other prisons in California. California has a, uh, their prison system is built on levels. So when you first go in, you have a lot of time to do. You're in like a higher level prison uh, with people that people are doing life without parole. Mostly, uh, I mean, the population was probably 40 and up. And you know, you you come in as a, an 18 year old kid with the life sentence, and you know, there's not a uh, there's not a lot of role models. Uh, to, oh, sorry. There's not a lot of role models to look up to, and there's not a lot to do. Um, early on in my incarceration, it was a lot of lockdowns, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of violence, um, people, you know, fighting, people stabbing each other, kind of typical stuff you hear about uh, on TV, and there's, not a, and there's not a lot of opportunity to do anything else other than you maybe work out, uh, read some books, watch TV, but there's not a lot of programs, not a lot of opportunity. Um, because you're, you know, you're in a higher level. You're, some people are never getting out of prison, and they just don't provide opportunities to do anything other than sit in a cell. A few years later, a few years down the road, maybe when I was around 20, 22, um, I got uh, moved. I got transferred over to San Quentin State Prison. And I always hate to say that any prison is, is, uh, is good or any uh, prison is like, beneficial, but uh, San Quentin has a lot of programs inside it that were very beneficial to me and also to um, other people, other uh, inmates, other guys in there. And, and what, I, what I found interesting was uh, when, you, when I was uh, looking at one of the slides and when you talk about like the bullying, about the uh, like in different ways uh, education uh, affects people, I think about when I was in other prisons um, besides San Quentin, I think about the violence level, I think about uh, the level of hopelessness, uh, people with mental health issues, um, and people who've just given up on life and, and kind of turned to like violence to, to solve problems. Um, I, and I think about San Quentin, where it has one of the only on-site prison programs in California, I know, and uh, maybe the United States. And I think about how it, it not only affects uh, people when they get out of prison, but, but the quality of life while you're in prison and what people, um, you know, people have something to look forward to, uh, going to these classes at nighttime, um, possibly didn't, getting a, a degree. And I think what's interesting is that most people that uh, are involved in the Prison University Project don't graduate, they don't get a degree. Most of the people, I think, I forget what the percentage is, but a high percentage of the people that are involved in that program don't ever get a college degree. Um, they're, they're guys with shorter, they're doing shorter prison sentences, and they get out before they can um, finish. Me, I, you know, I did 18 years in prison, so I had plenty of time to finish. But most guys are doing, like, you know, s six months, eight months. But what, what's interesting is that, the, what, the effect that it has on the on the prison system, on the on the yard, on the people out there, who instead of turning to uh, you know violence or, or 
um, you know, the typical things that happen in prison, people, people um, tend to try to work things out more. You know, people, you know, they're like, you know, we have a, we have a final coming up, you know, at the end of the week that uh, I've been studying for for the last, you know, month. Can we not, you know, can we not have a riot this week, you know? Can we put it off or something, right? <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it's, it's how, it's, it's how that, that, that education, uh, you know, not only affects you uh, and, your, like, your quality of life and just being able to, uh, you know, critically think about, about everything around you. It, uh, it just, you know, it empowers people to... to uh, do things differently, like to, to say that we can do something different. And I, I remember um, there was this one year in San Quentin where they transferred all these people from different prisons, right? They had a realignment. I don't know if anyone knows about realignment, but they were transferring people from different prisons from all over the um, California and uh, different places. And, there were, and a lot of them were coming to San Quentin. And a lot of them had the same values uh, from other prisons. Right, the, uh, the prison value that that values violence and um, and people were coming in and I mean a few weeks sometimes into being at San Quentin, like their mentality would change and people start thinking about, well, you know, what do I want to do in the future? What do I want to do when I get out of this place? Um, and it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was beautiful to see. Um, I graduated after about, it took me about four years or something to, uh, to graduate because there are lockdowns in prison and, you know, things happen. Uh, so it took me a little bit longer to graduate. And I got out of prison um, about three years ago. And I started working at um, a place called the Center on Juvenile and Criminal Justice, which, um, again, going back to the presentations, uh, it just... Uh, I mean, you can you can just take the name off some of those towns and put, uh, you know, Double Rock, which is a housing project in uh, San Francisco. You know, you could just switch the names. It's, it's the same place. You know, there's kids that they don't have a lot of hope. They don't they don't they can't see beyond, you know, four or five months of their life. Um, they don't think about going to school, they don't think about a vocation, um, and they're just, you know, they're just stuck in that, in that poverty and in, in, in these, um, in these housing projects. And what I do now is I work as a clinical case manager, and I, and I work, I do a number of things from, you know, giving kids rides to school, or like I advocate for kids in court, um, we do, we do mental health treatment, but we do everything in the community. So nobody comes to us. Like we all, we all, we, we go out there, our therapists go to the community. Everything we do is in the community. And what I love about our organization is that my boss, he, you know, he hires people, not, not everybody from the community, but he keeps a good balance. So not everybody there has a PhD, not everybody there it, you know, has a, is a licensed therapist. He hires, you know, he ha hires a wide range of uh, people. And, um, and I think it, you know, it's a good balance of, you know, people who intellectualize everything or, you know, people who, uh, uh, you know, just, it's just a good balance of, of uh, a population. But I attribute that job, I think, or even able to do stuff like this to what I, what I learned uh, being in the part of the prison uni prison university project, because when I got out, when I paroled, I, I had a you know I had confidence, like you know, and you know I le look at these presentations and you talk about uh, controlled groups and you know I, I can say well I, I, you know I know about that. I, I've read about that I took I took calculus I took statistics so it gave me it gave me like a leg up on everything. I didn't come out of there thinking, I can't do this, I can't do any of this stuff. So when, you know, when I started going on interviews, I, I felt confident, like I can get this job. Um, and I used my experience uh, as something valuable. And you know, it was just, I, tr I try to do every time I go on a job interview. Um, and it's definitely, I, I I relate it directly to what I learned inside those classrooms in San Quentin. Just, you know, uh, bouncing ideas off of each other, learning, taking tests, um, 
Uh, and I, and I, and I, you know, it's why I'm here. To, well, I, I think I still would have got out of prison, but it's why I've been so successful um, upon my release. Um, and you won't have to get the red card out for me because I think <laughs> I'm going to keep mine short. Uh, and uh, thank you guys. <laughs>